welcome all of you to our second tea and chat. Um, it's good to see a lot of new faces here today. We are expecting more women joining us during the duration of the event. Um, really, really pleased, really, really pleased and honoured to have Dr. Hany Banner with us today, who's travelled all the way from Birmingham. Have any of you seen Dr. Hany before? Have you seen him before? Dr. Hany Banner um, is the founder of the Islamic Relief. Um, for me, he's the wrong, but he calls himself the Khan. <laughs> But no, it's really fantastic to have you with us. I'm not going to take too much time, but just to say, can you make sure your mobile phones are on silent? Then, during the course of the lecture from Dr. Hani, I think we'll be serving food in about half an hour. So if we can just all carry on eating and listening, you'll have ample opportunity to ask questions um, at the end. Um, so if we let Dr. Hani finish, and then please kind of write your questions down or remember your questions and you'll have the opportunity to ask them. Um, inshallah, we should wrap up for about, I think, um, just before two and then that will allow time for questions. So I'm not going to waste any more time because we've got Dr. in town, over to you, Dr. Thank you. Alhamdulillah, uh, wassalamu rasulullah. Thank you very much. My code of dress today was a surprise for me. I was uh, undressed. And this <laughs> at the clothes shop somewhere in Bradford. So Dr. Hani was taken to Janan at oh, Mashallah. Oh, oh, <laughs> and even this one, I don't know what to call it. Kuse. Kuse. Huh? Kuse. Oh, anyway. <laughs> so this is my second time to go on to an official meeting with a Pakistani or Asian dress. The first one was with the Queen in 2004 when she gave me yani, a title or an, uh, what do you call it? Obi. Obi. An obi. At that time, as I said at that time, I have to honor the community which helped us to start from the 80s at that time. And people were not really happy with me because originally I'm an Arab, Egyptian. <laughs> Why should I wear Shirwani and Kamis? I said, you cool down because those people helped me or helped us from the very beginning, 83, 84, 85, with you people who are not on the map. So today is the second official meeting with my new name, Tani Khan. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about two or three things. First of all, a story of three women that Two of them I met, one of them I did not meet, but all are successful stories. Razia came to this country as a young Pakistani in 66. She was married, did not speak any language apart from Urdu, but she was a very good housewife. She was a very good a mother of six children. She was a very good supporter to her husband who became disabled because he had a car accident. And she managed in very beautiful way, lovely style, to raise six children with her. And her name was Razia. Razia comes from prison. Rida, which is satisfaction. A Rida. A Rida, which is satisfaction. She was satisfied with what Allah has given her, not understanding the culture, not understanding the language, but she understood how she loved her husband, how she loved her children, how she loved the community, how she insisted that her children should be brought up in a very, very good way. She passed away a few weeks ago with honor and dignity. And everybody was praying for us. She met all the challenges. But sometimes, nowadays, with our technology, our education, sometimes we fail to meet them. The second story was a young girl at the age of 17 during the Bosnia war, that's why 
If you see this flower, yes. it's a flower of Srebrenica, of peace and love. We don't want war anymore. Enough is enough. More than a quarter of a million people are being killed, Muslims and the Muslims. Yeah. More about 50 to 6,000 young girls and women have been raped, systematically organized. And she was one of the people, one of the girls, who has been captured or abducted to be put in a concentration camp. And she was systematically raped. But this was a system at that time to break the bonds of the Muslim family in Bosnia. But she refused to be humiliated in this camp and she decided to run, to escape, facing death. She could be shot dead, she could be captured again, she could be mutilated, she could be tortured, anything could happen. Adessa is still alive now. She was 17 in 1993. Now she is raising two children, have raised now already two children, and looking after a disabled husband who had another accident. So she is still insisting to keep fighting. Fighting, fighting not only that, but she created an organization to protect the victims of war. Not only in Bosnia, everywhere else. I met her this year, and she was in a status credibility, integrity, and honor higher more than all of us as men who can stand on the stages, under the spotlight, and say, hey, we've done it. No, we didn't do it. I just did it. The last one, but not the least, is somebody, maybe Fatih, I call her Fatih, because my daughter is called Fatih. This is her nickname. Anybody else who that he's a nickname? He's a nickname? What's your name? Huh? Tutu. Anyway, so it's my wife. She came also here, seven, no, 83, did not speak English. But she had one objective to have children, look after them, to look after her kingdom at home. And she gave me the space to do what you're talking about today. Without her giving me the space and the support, I could not have done or we could not have achieved what we have achieved over the last 30 or 40 years. Five children, no English language, housewife, focusing on building a community because the family is a community. Those three women from Asia, from Pakistan, from Bosnia, from Europe, from Europe, and from Egypt, from the Middle East, did it. We did not have the facilities that we are having today. I'm very happy and thrilled to be with you. When Fatima told me he travels here, I decided to come at any cost. Because women have a higher status, or the highest status in Islam. In Islam from the day one, even in the history of recognizing the achievement of other women, is also in Islam. Her dresser of the fairest daughter was a woman. And when the kum, do I have a kum with me to kum my hair? I brought this home today. I think I have one.
to Pharaoh himself. And Pharaoh brought her and their five or six children in front of her. And a very big boiling pot have boiling oil inside it. And tell him, I am your God. He said, no, you are not my God. Moses, God is my God. This is the history of woman in Islam. Stood like rock. The first child was thrown into the boiling oil. Same question came again. The second, same question came again. The third, the fourth. And they found that she could be becoming softer by asking, can I ask you a question? Because the last one was a small baby. And always the mother, most of you are, very attached to the little one. Said, can I ask you a question or a favor? Said, oh, she is convinced now. Said, yes. She told him, can you, when you throw me into the boiling oil, keep my bones with the bones of my children in the same graveyard? Who said this story? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu at the time of Isra and Mi'raj were going ascending to heaven in companionship of Jibril alayhi salam. And they smelled a very beautiful smell. And Muhammad Sallallahu looked at the angel, Jibril. So then, what is this smell? He said, this smell is coming from the graveyard of the hairdresser of the daughter of Pharaoh. Recorded in the history of humanity, for humanity to learn that woman has a role, not a role, but a leading role to play in the community. Her master, or the lady of the house, the wife of the wife of Pharaoh, the wife of Pharaoh. Of course, she believed in Moses, Asia. Of course, she believed in Allah, Asia, and she was tortured by her husband. And he put her in the middle of the desert land in Cairo. It was not called Cairo at the time. Egypt. Very hot. And he was torturing his wife. Torturing his wife. Because his wife denied his godhood. And she's following, or she was following, the message of Moses. And when he was in the middle of being tortured, she started to smile. And he thought, Actually, she is trying to take a pardon from Pharaoh. She said, do what do you want? She said, no. But she was excited. So Allah, words which became verses in the Quran. Rabbi Dini Inda Kabaitan Fri Jannah, Manajiri Min Fra'awna, Wa Imal. Oh Allah, build for me a house in heaven and save me from Pharaoh and his people. When she was smiling, you know why she was smiling? Because Allah let her to see her house in heaven, which was tortured. And she said, my wife became mad. She's insane. She is dying and smiling. But he did not know that she is looking at a different world. At that time, she looked at her house or palace in heaven, leading a woman in Islam. The greatest woman in Islam mentioned in the Quran, Lady Mary, peace be upon her, Asya, which is the wife of Pharaoh, she mentioned their story, his wife, Khadija, and his daughter, uh, Fatima. Greatest woman in humanity. So, we do not in Islam differentiate between Lady Mary, our mother, which you believe in her agony, when she became pregnant as a virgin, no husband, to bring out baby Jesus, peace be upon him, who stood like a rock, actually to spread the message of God. And she was behind him, taking all the burden and the bad name. She was called, oh, the daughter of family of Imran. How dare she became pregnant? How dare, how dare, how dare? She couldn't be able to speak. Because of the quality, quality of a young woman at the age of 15 or 16 or 14 at the time when she has baby Jesus, please be upon him. 
Khadija was uh, the drive behind Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mission as a wife, as a lover, as a mother, as a lobbyist, as a supporter. Okay? This was Khadija. So when we take our pride and the honor, we we'll take it from those, and we we'll take it from Razia, who came here from Pakistan and brought up six children, or from Adessa, which refused to have this kind of life to be tortured every day in a camp. She was not scared of death, but she fought to fight back and to leave, risking her life, and maybe I'm not going to talk about my wife anymore. Maybe you're from somebody else. Okay? And from you. Every one of us meets challenges. Life cannot be life without challenges. If we go to heaven, there's no challenges. When we go to heaven, it's safe, peace, serenity, tranquility forever. Because we have done our duty on earth. Once we do our duty, we'll be able to be rewarded later on in heaven, inshallah. So it's our duty nowadays to meet the challenge. Not only to meet the challenge, to create the challenge. Not only to create the challenge, to make the challenges which help and save and protect our community and to build a new generation. Because the mother is the teacher not only of her family, but the teacher of humanity. The mother is a school and the university of the community. Because she has what I don't have as a man. I may be having my muscles to go outside, talk, to shout, and all. But she has, actually, you know why uh, uh, Allah has created the uh, uh, from the rib of Adam, sometimes said, yeah, because she's created from a twist rib. The twist is beauty. You know, look at my eyebrows. They have this twist. Okay? It added beauty. Not only that, it protects the heart and the lungs. You need something to be like this, to protect them. It cannot be straight. Allah, when He created somebody, He has not created him or her for what? For our understanding, but for what? For His reasoning. Yeah, we want her to be like that. Maybe there's some differences in Ibadah between woman and man, especially when we have she has a physical change every month. But this is what Allah given her to relax, actually, and to understand that during this time to be difficult and emotionally upset. So please look after her while she is this kind of self affair. Uh, physical changes or, uh, uh, during this a few days every month. This actually what Allah taught us is when Adam, not Adam, he is Adam. When Allah created Adam, uh, as Shaitan, the devil, was very jealous. Said, oh, beautiful body, who is he? When Allah told uh, Iblis, the Satan, to make a Jew for Adam, said, no, why should I make a Jew to somebody who created them from clay and they created me from fire? Not only that, the angels were asking other questions. Oh Allah, are you creating somebody who will destroy land, make bloodshed? She said, I told her, I told the angels, I know what you don't know. Then he went to Adam, alayhi salam. Adam al Then he taught Adam the names of reasoning, not the names of objects. What does it mean? These names of science, technology, knowledge, you Adam, and sons and daughters of Adam has to look for it to develop humanity to protect humanity, to save humanity, and to build the community. Not only the names of table or chairs or haram and the only no. It is how to build. And asma'a kullah, it is the name of how to build society and community and civilization and renaissance. 
وعلم الاسماء قدم علم الاسماء كلها ثم على ضمه زين هي تولد ذيم كان يو جيف مي ذا نيمز اكسبلين تو مي سيد نو لا علم لنا الا ما هو دونت نو اني ثينك ابارت فروم وات يو هاف جيفن تو اس اند ذن وين هي اسكت ادم تو تيل ذيم ذا نيمز ذي ميكس جود ذا ديسكشن بين الله اند ذا انجلز مينز ذات الله واز تولرنت تو ذا ديفل Who refused to make sujood and let him to live with a challenge, and to the angels who are arguing, asking why should you put those people on land? And before that, there was some other creation on land and misvoiling the land itself. He the challenge. We agree that we have been created to meet the challenge, to create the challenge, and to make the challenge which can save and protect the community and our family. The more we protect our community, the more we protect, we protect our family, the more we protect ourselves. Protection is a process of protection to others. If we live for others, we live forever. If we live for others, we live forever. That's why all the prophets are living forever with us. Because they lived for others. They lived for communities. They lived for societies. They lived from humanity and they live to spread the message of Allah on earth from the time of Adam السلام, to the time of Muhammad وسلم, including all the prophets who came at the time Jesus, Moses, Abraham uh, everybody, 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 everyone so if we live if we live for others we live forever if you want to live forever live for others When you protect others, you protect your family as well. That's why this is the philosophy of what my wife, what Adessa, and what Razia have implemented, and what the hairdresser of the daughter of Pharaoh, and Asia, and others did, and the, the great lady of Yemen. You think that you can live in this life without challenges? No way. No way. Forget it. The more you live for others, the more that Allah will look at you. I tell you something. What did I keep today as well? I came for you. As well as I came to see somebody, you know, whom we traveled together 31 years ago, not knowing one another, to Bangladesh. He and the others, Qasim Khan, raised 30,000 pounds for the cycle of Bangladesh in 1991, where about 25 million people were underwater. I dropped uh, my thesis at that time. When I always fail, alhamdulillah, I always have bad failure. When I was proposing young girls to get married, I was refused <laughs> quite a few times. Thank you. Thank you. When actually I uh, make my graduate test, I failed four, maybe five times. Alhamdulillah. When I sat my exams, the license exams, as a medical doctor, I failed four times. What else? I keep I'm a failure. <laughs> so my nickname is the failing guy. The failing guy. So when I found that nobody else wanted to go with uh, Qasim Khan in 1991, July 1991, I decided to drop my thesis and to go with him to Bangladesh. Very risky because I should have submitted my thesis before November 1991 and we were going to Bangladesh in July 1991. I sent my family to Egypt and I told them that I'm going to Bangladesh and they went with him. You know what? On this Friday, on this Friday, in the evening, this, I have the data of my thesis. The data is there with me for another four, five or six years, for the last five, six years. And they looked at the same data, at the same data. Allah guided me to produce from the same data, a new theory or hypothesis which has not been done before. Because I was working on a spinal bifida 
Chest there was no brains. We called it an encephaly or an encephaly with uh, no spinal cord at the back. It's open, actually, at that time. And Allah, to, to, to reward me before I go to Bangladesh, He let my mind to think differently at the data that I have in my thesis and to do this new, new, what you call it, new uh, hypothesis or theory. I wrote it down, this was 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening in my office in Queen Elizabeth's Hospital. And I went Monday morning showing it to, to the supervisor. What do you think? He says, yes, good. And you have put this, put it. Put it in the, in, in, in the, in the, the, the discussion. It became a new theory. This means when you leave your, when you creep, when you reproterize your interest for the interest of Allah, Allah will never leave you alone. At the time, the decision was to leave my thesis and go to Bangladesh. Allah told me, stop. I'm going to give you a token of appreciation. In the evening, it was a new theory in which he guided me throughout it in my age and my thesis before submitting it. This is something which you need to know. You might say, oh my God, you travel to Bangladesh now and you leave behind you, you might be much fail again. But our measurement of success and failure is different to the measurements of Allah of success and failure. Actually, when he measures, he measures because he has all the measures. The day of Allah is 1,000 years. Another verse could be equivalent to 50,000 years. The day of us is 24 hours. 1,440 minutes. It's not 1,000 years. It's not 50,000 years. Because his measure is different. His dimension of knowledge is different. Because he's the source of everything. So when I am down, you know who make me to go down? The one who is challenging Allah and challenging Adam. And his name was the Satan. And I will show you, Allah, how can I distract your people? He said, the only lost one amongst them will follow you. But the believing, the pious, and the direct one will never follow you. Will never follow you. See, the tolerance of Allah to tolerate the arrogance of the Satan, who was a good believer before Adam was created. He, he, he used to worship Allah for more than 80 or 100 years. But when he saw that he's going to kneel down or make sujood, to Adam said, no, I am better than arrogance. Knowledge given to you, sister, is from Allah. You become arrogant with it, you are down. Achievement given to us is from Allah and our Lord. If we start to say, hey, I've done it, I'm down. This actually, when we try to bring us back, success of an individual is the dua of the families and the children and the orphans and the widows and displaced people to him and there. One of my colleagues, he was dying. He was dying because he had a cancer in his throat, very deep. And the doctor came to his wife and to his daughter, told them, your husband is dying, finished. Your father is dying. The daughter, Sa'ad, refused. She said, my father is not going to die. But the, 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 the wife, she accepted the fact that she became a widow. On that day, or the following day, you know what happened? They ran their office or their relative in, in Sudan to talk to the people in the camp from Eritrea. You know, Isa? Is called the Ithar in Birmingham, then told them, uh, uh, Sultan is dying. Please pray for Sultan. The whole camp, men and women, young and old, made prayer for him from Zohar in the afternoon till night. Sultan is still alive up to today. Sultan is still alive because of the dua of the poor people, the needy people, the simple people to Sultan. Engage yourself all the time 
with the people that Allah loves you to be next to them, loves you to be with them, loves you to support them, to talk to them, to show humility to them, to stand behind your cause. The people in your goal, living in concentration camps, spreading many of them, a lot of rumors coming from there. Some of them are fact, not fiction, in China. And we see them in Turkey. We see them in different countries. We just met some of the orphans, the gold orphan, in, in, in Istanbul a few weeks ago. The stories you will hear from the mother is incredible. Is incredible, is incredible. It's incredible. The story of what happened in Kashmir. What's happening in Kashmir? Actually, or in India to the minorities. The story was happening to the Rohingya, who came out from Arakan Burma. The story here and there and here, the story of women to the women and the young girls of DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. The highest rate, rate of rape in there. Once the young girl is raped, systematically raped by everybody in the village. Not because they are not Muslim, we don't stand behind them. Not because we are from, from the, they are not from our clan or our race, we don't stand behind them. You stand behind everyone, because this is the message of Islam. And this is a humanitarian message of all the prophets of God. None of the prophets of God came and told us, taught us, not, not to stand to support anyone and everyone, whether they believe in his message or they don't believe in his message. Uh, this is a story. The story of challenges, the story of standing up, so why should you feel down? And come over it. We we'll have to struggle. Because we are fighting who? We are fighting an enemy that he can see us and we don't see him. He can fight us and we don't see how he is fighting us. He can whisper to our ears and do not know how he is whispering. And this was for us 24 hours. That yet now. As he told Allah, I will come to them from the, between their hands here. You listen to me, he's here. He is here. And he's very upset. You know why? Because he is seeing all of you listening to me, not listening to him. From Mabayna Aydeem, between their hands, from behind, from the right, and from the left. And I will keep going around them. Till I will make them like a cocoon. Then I throw them into red fire. Said, Allah told them, no, not my believing steps. And you are the believing steps. You are the believing steps. The, the, the simplest way of coming us, uh, out from my, my depression is to ask Allah to protect us from the devil. It's number one. To keep reading. You know, I was listening to some of the sheikhs from Egypt about a uh, citation. His name is Muhammad Rifat. If you want to go to Muhammad Rifat, I'm not sure if you have a film. And Muhammad Rifat, didn't you? I don't know, Muhammad Rifat. In Arabic? I'm going to tell you in Arabic. I'm going to tell you in Arabic. So we have a translation of Sheikh Muhammad Rifat. So we have a translation on YouTube or Google, you'll find it in Google. You don't know it's not important, it's not important. Muhammad Rifat, when we were listening to him this morning, as if he was talking to Allah by reading his Quran. How often we read Quran every day. If we cannot read it, how often we can listen. Listen. Listen with the wish that Allah will open our heart to the recitation of the good people. How often? We shouldn't put barrier between us and Allah. If you read Quran, you read the words written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah can imagine that you are sitting here reading and Allah is listening to you. Allah, oh my God, I give you more blessing. She's struggling. This is one of the ways to kill the devil. Do you need to read the Quran, the whole Quran every day? No. Do you need to read 30 pages, 40 pages? No. Maybe one page, maybe two pages, maybe three pages, but listen to it. While we are in the car, Say, I would be a shadim. Never do you know the root? Root. Root is a prayer on the Prophet. 
where, where, where expressed in Leah one the Prophet, with Muhammad Sallallahu and Jesus and others. And this truth, you know who is responding to us? In Allah Malaikatahu, Salluna ala Nabi, Ya Ayuhal Adina Amanu, Sallu alayhi wa sallimu tislim. Oh Allah and His angels, Allah and His angels making prayer and a prayer on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All believing people make prayer. Salatu wa salam alayka ya Rasulullah. Do we do this? Very simple. Do we do when we go to bed? Say Fatiha. Fatiha, just Fatiha. Do we go to bed having wudu? Because when I have wudu, if we're going to win, the angel will be surrounding me. Do I do wudu before I go to bed? I'm just talking about the very simple ways of doing something, first step, to keep this different. I'm going to keep you away to destroy the whole of your life. Do we do this? Very simple. Do we do add the kursi? Just add the kursi. Add the kursi. Just one add the kursi. Do we try to listen to the Quran? How long this will take from us? Very simple. But this will be the source of serenity, the source of inspiration, the source of motivation, and the source of vision that Allah will put in our hearts and mind and soul when we work for the community. Because he will tell you, you remember me, I remember you. You mention me in this group, I will mention you on another group, high in heaven, far more better than your group. You report me to your group, my angels will come to you as in Malayakat of Tawafun, the wandering, flying angels. And come to me, to me from any place where my slaves, male and female, will be reporting to me back what they have seen. And they will tell Allah, what's your name, sister? Saira. Saira. Yeah. Saira and her colleague are remembering me. Said, forgive Saira and their colleague. And everybody in the room. You know what the angel will tell them? But Allah. The somebody called Hani, Hani is me, and he's just there by chance. He did not have any intention to sit down with the sisters or be with them. He said, forgive him as well, because he is sitting in her companionship, and I'll forgive anybody who was there by intention or not intention, because it was a companionship of the good people like you. This is how Allah is very merciful, very lenient, very considerate, actually very understandable. Because he trains us and they understand every psychosocial problem happening to us. You think that actually our, our uh, psychiatric doctors will understand our psyche better than Allah? I want to hear it. No. That's it. Go to the source. Go to the, 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 what do you call it? The, 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 is it pure English? Pure. Do I speak English now? That's pure. Who is the creator? Can we live on this planet through a different system which Allah did not give to us? I'll tell you an example. Can I see you who's closing my eyes? Can I ask my heart to stop? What will happen to me? Can I ask my breathing in and out to stop? I'll be dead. Can I go on without food for days and weeks? I'll be dead. Who gave us all these systems in our, in our body? Allah. So when I look at the way I speak, the way I eat, the way my heart beats, the way my stomach the digest the food, and, 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 You'll find there is, there is a system. It's me. Are you taking me off? No, no, no. no. We need to. The food's ready, so if we can food's ready. For okay. Minutes, we right. Oh, if you, when we look up at this system, find that the one who provides us with this system, provides this system to actually live on his planet, the least we can do for him is that. If that we, I tell you something. If the queen award you, or the king award you, or the president award you, will she thank you? 
We say when you dress the best dress at home, you will not sleep for the whole night. You will have to go to shower and keep the scrapping my scrapping for it. Maybe uh, keep scrapping and do all, all the person because you're going to make a, 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 an individual. What about Allah who wants you to meet him five times a day? The least. Consider you meeting with the king and the queen. Like you meet Allah. I stop. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Hani. We'll break for about 15 minutes. Let Dr. Hani rest his vocal cords for 15 and then we'll go into the QA. So get your questions ready. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to go to the question about the lady? We can try. We can try. Yeah, we can try. Don't do that with me. I think as soon as we put them down, we can do it. All right. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'm sure. Like, my son is 11 years old, yeah? Every day, he's 
every day I tell him, when you take your clothes off, hang them on the hang them on the door. Hang them. Yes? I think you, every mother shares that. Right? No, but you know this type of little thing that causes this kid when you get married. So my husband, he doesn't hang them still. Yes? He doesn't what? After, he doesn't, he doesn't hang he doesn't them. His clothes. So this is this is a part this is a parenting thing. This little thing can cause disputes. Do you understand? So what I'm saying is um, how do you not get angry? Because I want to smack his arm. Yes? Because he's been there in two weeks now. I've given him reward. I said, oh, well, don't you do it. So, and then he just ignored it. Oh, mom, oh, mom, oh, mom. Yeah? But then some days he does it. Now, this is a struggle, and I understand that you said the struggle. But come on, man. Sudan is not telling you to hang your clothes. <laughs> so, your, your question is how do you discipline your child? Yeah, but and still not, like, yeah, how do you mentally. <laughs> not lose it as a mom on little, little things and you, you know the challenges you want to make him to be like the proper mom of Salah Salah you know but yet the boy can't even have his clothes and the proper used to sew his clothes so I just think how am I going to do it when this guy can't even put it on down like, sorry like, you first of all first of all we should as I mentioned to you earlier should be very patient yeah. and you say because this is happening Every house, yes, every house, yes. not only at the, at the age of 11 years. You see people at the age of 25 and 30 years who keep leaving the light yes. in the front room yes. until the second morning, uh, not hanging their clothes, not even cleaning the dishes. One day, you have to feel them to feel, to let them feel guilty by doing it in silence. Is that what you do? Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they would. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. that, that one, one day, one day, when he realized in a very soft way, he will change. The change of the individual is the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what we need to do is to keep trying. And you see, because if I curse my children now, who would love to attract them? Definitely, oh, oh my God! Yeah, he was meant because he wants you to fall out with your husband. Yeah. The best night and the best day and the best time that when the divorce happened. That's why one of my projects nowadays for you is pre-marital education that you start. Don't let young people to get married without understanding the responsibility. I had maybe 10 advices for, 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 for young men and young women before getting married. They have to answer them. But it was the advice of the mother to the girl and the advice of the father to the boy. It's not just a, what do you call it, a honeymoon style. Honeymoon will go over a week or two or three. Then after that will be left with the cleaning out of the house, with uh, sitting down and having, helping, uh, make all these sort of things with the children. With, and when we start not to understand our responsibility, we'll be, be actually uh, arguing and maybe some, unfortunately, become physically in some, in some instance, unfortunately. But actually, try not to throw your children into the other direction, which is the devil would be, would love to you to do that. When you start, uh, Doctor, does that apply to your husband as well? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, 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 I tell you, I, I tell you, if I, if, I, if I get you what the mother told her daughter about how to treat her husband, you might think that I am, uh, what do you call it, uh, unisex or what do you call it, uh, against the woman's rights. But they have to do both of them together. And maybe one day we can translate it and send it to you look at like uh, something at the guidance but to be very honest it's one of the challenges all of you have to make this pre-marital educational courses to let the young boys and girls understand what the responsibility of marriage marriage is not that it's just a, lie, a, a beautiful girl marriage is not a bedroom relationship marriage is not the time you do to young boy young man no marriage is a responsibility it's a community building is a protection, is a bringing of the new generation. This is marriage. Okay, marriage is not about money, not about the. Because you don't have to have a marriage. 
Do you prefer if you, your marry the girl for fortune, for her beauty, for her family, for her being, and for her wealth? One of the four. But the Prophet ﷺ gave the preference to the one who has the deed, the religion. And Yunka had a rabbul wahda bas. But the man will be given my daughter for one thing, for his deed, of course, and his social status. I remember uh, one of the one of the tabi'i, tabi'i, which is not the, not, not the companions, but the generation after the companions. He found one of his uh, one of his students absent from the circle. And for two or three days. Then uh, next day he came. And he told them, why you didn't come yesterday? He said, I, my wife passed away. On the same night, on the same night, this Tabi'i took his daughter to the house of his student. And they said, the young student said, who are you? Who is there? And I'm Saeed. He said, which Saeed? He said, Saeed so and so. He was shocked because that's his, his teacher. He opened the door. And you know what he told them? This is my daughter. This is your wife. The husband chosen the husband, sorry, the father chosen the husband for his daughter. Because of his deed. Then, the man, the, 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 what, the husband, was shocked. No food, no clothes, nothing in the house. He went to the room, said, oh, help me, help me, help all the, all the neighbors. And his mother and everybody else came. He was wrong. He said, I'm married. I said, get out of the house for three days and we'll prepare everything for you. They prepared everything for him. This was the relationship. When the father understood the best for his daughter and the daughter at the time, believe that he is the best for her. After what we call honeymoon nowadays, uh, the, no, no, not, not, not our honeymoon, yeah. not honeymoon, honeymoon. And he wants to go out to listen to her, uh, to her uh, father. He said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to listen to your father's circus. And you sit down at home, I will teach you what my father is teaching. Sit down. And they sat down to learn from his wife for another month at home to look after him and to be educated by his wife. This was the relationship. Not because you are my wife, I all the time to teach you. Not because you are my wife, I'm all the time above you in knowledge and experience and other. And not because I'm, I'm your husband and your wife, you have to become behind me. No, Islam did not teach us that. Sorry. Thank you. Any more questions for anybody before we dive into food? Is that what that is? What inspired you? You! There's too many sources of inspiration. Most important source is to be with the people who are very simple. Okay? Be with the simple people. Be with the people who clean up the house. The people who clean the road. The people who serve us everywhere, here and there. Be with the simple people who drive our buses, and drive our cars, and drive our uh, uh, schools, the teachers, and others. Be with the simple people. You know who are the simple people? The simple people are the prophets and messengers of Allah. Can you give me an example of any prophet who was not a simple man in his society? in his country, in his community. He was a simple man. But we decided not to be next to the simple people, that Allah loves us to be next to them. When you be with all those people, when you go to Pakistan or to Bangladesh or to India or to uh, uh, Syria or to uh, Yemen and other, and see those people, how they meet you with a smile. The smile is to wash the sins from my heart and motivate me and build my morality. And my actually motivation when you are with those young people. When we were in Turkey with the Sheikh Kamat Ali Hashim Suriya, the Suriya take a moment. Can I? 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 Can
تعالي هنا انت كمان تعالي في زيوز زوجتك كوفتاسك هي مالكو هي عشان هاو دي مالي هاي ون تو يانج وومن ميكس ود ذا اورفن ذا سيريال اورفن ان اسطنبول It's not hijab, which make you Muslim or Twitter Muslim. They are not hijab. And which, when the young orphan in Istanbul had the young girl, he reformed with her 24 hours. He changed her. And she was in tears for days. But she felt the need of those young children to help. She felt that she's like an older sister or a mother to those children. And this is where you get motivated. Sister, you get motivated when the your your girl children or the Syrian children or the Bengali children or the the, the Congo, Congolese children hug you and look at you with a smile, and the people face when they don't have they're still living in tents, they are living in no man's land, but they still most welcome, and they insist that they want to give you a drink, and you know what? You don't want to take the drink because you are afraid for your health. Uh, it be, might not be a, 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 a clean water, but they want to give you the best of what they have. This is what motivates you. It's not reading, it's not writing, it is your communication and connection. So when you work for others, when you live for others, you live forever. Thank you. Thank you. Can you congratulate them on getting married? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, husband and wife. So actually, whilst you're here, for those of you that don't know, we want to introduce these are the owners of this establishment. Please say hello and welcome everyone. So we are first of all part of a team. Brother Hisham is one of the owners. Brother Anas Al-Halab, his sister Lama. Hello, Mr. Kamal. Hello, who is Hisham? Let's get into it. Hello, let's get started. I'm Abdul Rahman Makia, I'm one of the owners here in the university. This is my wife, Sumaya Sabouni. She's in charge of social media. She's actually the real boss. That's your role to become a leader. If you don't speak, you don't hold the microphone. Behind the camera, speak. Behind the camera. I do the social media for now. Okay. Thank you. I love this one. Any other questions, ladies? 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 Do you have all the food? They can be thinking about questions. Okay. We'll take a break. Okay, so we said we'd come back and see if there were any more questions, first of all, for Dr. Hani, whilst we've got him with us. So any more burning questions and comments that anybody would like to... Yeah, one over there in the corner. Could you, could you just stand up, please? And then we can hear you. Thank you. You're far away. When you were giving the child to say, if you work for a you live forever. Yeah. That's what you said. Yes. So how do you identify yourself as a and purpose? You don't worry about what service you provide, even if you clean the road, even if you clean the window. You don't worry. You worry about your heart. Why you are doing it for? Are you are doing it for yourself? Are you are doing it to make Allah happy with you? Are you are doing it to serve the community? The intention is the cornerstone of your long life or your living forever. This was the intention of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then their companions, then the disciples of Jesus and Moses, peace be upon him. Then the reformers. Up till now, people talk about reformers, not even prophets. Because they have done something, sacrificed their life, their wealth, everything. Even the family stood behind them. I give you an example of uh, Edi, Maulana Abu Sattar Edi. Maulana Abu Sattar Edi started his work after the split, the war in 1947, split of Pakistan and the India, remember? And he came to Pakistan, and he was a salesman, door-to-door -door salesman. He was not educated from a university, not high level, not millionaire, nothing. 
Auntie's mother uh, was sick and she died because there was no ambulance in the city at that time in Karachi. His idea was to open an organization or to start an organization to just save lives of people by providing this ambulance service. It became the AD Foundation, which was hundreds and hundreds of ambulances, maybe uh, air ambulances, maybe don't know how many workers, but 20 or 30,000 workers, about 40,000 uh, volunteers, and, and all this sort of He was a very simple man, but he was working tirelessly for an objective, to try to save lives of people. That's why you and me, remembering of the study today, and I am not a Pakistani by birth, but I make a story about him. Whenever I go, that means that he is living with us. His legacy is behind him because his intention, his contribution, his dedication, his submission to Allah and to the people of his own community. This is how you become, you, know, you don't worry about the kind of project that you want to do. You don't worry about who is going to be with you. At the very beginning, we have nothing. Here, this, I was talking to the brother here. What are you? Are you the husband? <laughs> she is a wife, huh? They started at home by making kunafa and uh, what's the other one? Baklawa. In Cairo, the same happened. 2011, Syrian community came to Egypt and they were standing out because the wife, because the mother, because the sister, because the daughter were doing this baking at home in front of uh, Al-Husari Mosque in uh, Rabah Adawiyah Mosque and they st start to stand up with this big tray. Now, some of them has chains in Egypt and he will have chains. He, 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 he is a pharmacist. My daughter was a phar is a pharmacist as well with a PhD. She decided to give up to give up her status in the university and start to do something called Pavlova. You know Pavlova? Yeah. Yeah, she's doing it. It's very expensive, but she's doing it. And as well as cookies, small ones. And now she's registering, a, what do you call it, a company for herself, and selling herself to have her own business. Okay. So it's changing 180 degrees her career. You can do a lot at home. Don't sit at home and do nothing. The do nothing people are waste of time people. Because you are an ambassador of the Prophet, وسلم, ambassador of Lady Mary, Khadija, Sarah, and Asia, and others, you stand up for them. For the quality, not for the quality of myself, but for the quality of those great women in humanity. And don't become chicken, because chicken will be eaten by rats and mice. But become like a lioness. Lioness, when, when she roars, she frightened everybody in the forest or in the jungle, everywhere. You are a lioness. You can do it. Do anything at home. Start like, come here. <laughs> How did you start from home? Well, my father-in-law asked my wife to do kunata, and we thought, we, we haven't done it before. So my wife starts. My wife, come on, my wife, no, my, his wife. <laughs> come on, his wife. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just, she started from home and uh, we start optimizing, looking at different recipes and trying out. We add this more, less, and then we try it and we let other people try it until we find the final recipe. Alhamdulillah, we, we've done it well. Each one of you has to have a project, an initiative to stand up for it and to fill its time, her time. Because if you leave a big, empty amount of the, a, a, a time which has not used, you're only leaving yourself the devil to keep whispering at your ears. Don't let him to whisper at your ears. Keep yourself busy. Doing your own initiative, visit your own neighbor, being in a circle with the sisters, trying to do something positive. Try to tell Allah every day, every day that I will be positive. I will be positive. I will be positive. Because you created me to be a positive. 
He taught Adam all the names and the means and reasoning of the living and the life of an earth. Technology, uh, the universe, you know, this universe, or all, all, all in the Quran, the cycle of moon and cycle of moon and star and uh, sun and others, all this. This was beyond the knowledge of the angels. That's why Adam became this level and the angels became this level. It's not how much you pray, it's how much you interact, connect, communicate, and help. Islam is not about hefz, Islam about manner, Islam about dealing, because 80 to 90 percent of Islam is the dealing in our life. Aisha Radhiana, she knows she never said that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had memorized the Quran or Hadith or others, but she said that his manner was according to what's written in the Quran. Uh, he was a walking Quran on earth. Another way, he was the living mission of Quran, which is the message of Allah. He did not, she did not say that he is memorizing or just uh, finishing reading Quran once a day. This is not enough. What is the impact of reciting or making a hifz on the community? When I become hafiz with a liar, hafiz by cheating, and, 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 and. I want you to become hafiz and the alim. And this is how you educate your children at home. Which I said, or not only me, we said, everybody said, you are the school, the college, the university, producing generations, guiding generation, saving generation, and creating leadership. Okay, don't undermine the capability that Allah put in yourself. Some people can say weaknesses, we say strength. Your emotion, your love, your care, your compassion is a strength, not weaknesses. It's a strength, because I, as a, as a man, cannot be emotionally like you. I cannot be merciful like yourself. I cannot be considerate like you, because Allah created me different to complement one another. You, as a lady in the house, or the queen, and the queen of the house. Your house is your kingdom. Your house is your kingdom. Your house is your kingdom. And the, 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 the beautiful thing in the house is the generation that you will bring up. Whether you are qualified from Oxford, or Cambridge, or any university. Because Sister Razia, who came from Pakistan in 1966, she was not qualified from anywhere. She was just coming as a young Pakistani girl. She did not know the culture or the language, but she managed to bring up six children and support us, support a disabled husband who had a car accident. And she was working from home. She never gave up. Never surrendered to the devil. Never. I'm just saying it with a very strong voice. Never ever let him to overcome you. Let Allah to see you wherever you are, whenever you are, and whatever you are doing. He is the one who is a supporter, not the president, not the king, not the queen, not the millionaire. When you ask, ask Allah. When you seek refuge, seek refuge of Allah. Make Qiyamul Layl. Qiyamul Layl is about even half an hour. Even 10 minutes, when you stand alone in the middle of the darkness and say, Oh Allah, I am with you. Nobody else can see you but him. When he sees you, huh, standing next to him, come on. And, and standing next to him, standing in front of him, you know what he will say? He will tell the angels, See, see, see my slave? She got out of a very comfortable, warm bed in a very cold night and she's standing up very tired and she's asking me if she asks me anything i will respond if she make a prayer i will respond if she asks anything i will respond because nobody can see you when you stand alone with him at night 
in the middle of the darkness. You're not doing this as a show off. You're doing this because the amount of love he is giving to you for him. I hope that each and every one of us love him as much as he loves us. No way. No way. No way. We cannot, we cannot rise to the level of his love to us. So you say, Oh Allah, let me to love you as much as you love me. Oh Allah, let me to be merciful with people as much as you are merciful with me. Can you say this? Yes, I can. Oh Allah, let me to become forgiving to the people who backbite me, who call me names, who treat me badly. They were throwing dirt on the head of the Prophet They were calling him name. Same to, to, same to Jesus. You know what they said to Jesus? What this is about Lady Mary? We will not, you will not tolerate it. You will not tolerate it, what has been mentioned and Lady J about Lady Mary, alayhi salam. No woman will tolerate well, But she was Mary. Because she is Mary. And she will be Mary forever. And he was Jesus, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he is Jesus. And will be Jesus for us forever. He tolerated every insult. And every na bad names mentioned about him by the people at his time. Same like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the same about Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam, the same about all those people. And they did it because they lived for others. That's why they are living with us forever. I love you, whether you like it or not, whether the safeguarding, it's safeguarding. <laughs> they teach us safeguarding. What? We do safeguarding 24-7. When we started 30, oh, nearly 40 years ago now. Our policy are no woman and men should be in one room. Alone. Never. Self-guarding came yesterday. Because the woman was abused as a refugee, or as a displaced, or as a widow, or as a divorcee. No way. This was our policy more than 35 years ago following and observing the etiquette of the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A woman and a man in a room alone will be accompanied by the devil. And you cannot say who is right and who is wrong. So open door policy is necessity that she goes to his room. That's it. Come now and tell me Make policy or self-guarding. Employ officer about self-guarding. Employ director about self-guarding. What? We have it. We had it. But we are failing to teach others what do you mean by self-guarding in Islam, which is there. Even advocacy. You know advocacy? 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 advocacy. advocacy. No? <laughs> Listen in the Quran, in Surah Ma'un. And Surah uh, Al-Fajr, Wala Yahuddu. The word Yahuddu is to spread the news of the poor people. This was written, but we do not publicize it. Wala Yahuddu ala ta'an miskeet. Do not advocate for the needs of the needs. It's advocacy. Now people come and tell us, we teach you, how can you make advocacy? Because we don't go to the Quran as a book of knowledge, as a source of knowledge, not only a source of guidance. Knowledge for the etiquette of how we live in this life. Please, sister, I said, please in Egyptian or please in Arabic English? Please, huh? Please, 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 please. Listen to the Quran if you cannot read it. Please. Listen to it. Listen to it. Choose the, 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 the reciter who can let you to fly high and spiritually to be with Allah when he recites the Quran. Be with him. Come on, sister. I need to stand next to you. you, you. No, I'm going to kidnap her. I, I'm, I'm honored to be with you in front of the camera. What's your name? Abila. Eh? Abila. Amina. 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 Amina.
Give us an advice. Any advice? Say, hold it. <coughs> Any advice? Any advice? Anything you want to say? I'll just say one word that describes how you felt today. Okay. Yeah, I love you. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them I love you. She loves you. Thank you. So another way. The least is to listen. To the recitation. Another way. The least is to listen to the recitation. The least is to go to sleep with wudu. The least is to go to sleep and say Fatiha al -Kitab. The least is to go to sleep when you have to recite Ayat al Kursi. The least is to tell Allah every day that I, would, I will be positive. I will be positive. I will be positive. Tell Allah to help me. Help me Allah to be positive. Thank you. Can we have a round of applause, ladies? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thrilled. It's been, I mean, the knowledge base that you have. I don't have knowledge. I don't have base. <laughs> <laughs> we could spend all day listening to you, but thank you for taking the time out, coming all the way from Birmingham. Thank, so thank, thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. 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 Thank you.